Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. In this video, I want to tell you about the most important non-commutative ring that you will never learn in your undergraduate career. And that's the Weyl algebra. And this Weyl algebra is really important because it tells you the algebra that you need to study how to solve many ordinary differential equations. Okay, so what's the starting point? Okay, so uh, we'll keep things simple by starting with a space of functions that we can differentiate and that's going to be our algebra of polynomials um, with coefficients in the complex numbers. So that's C of X. So our variable here will be X. And this is CX, this polynomial algebra is in particular a vector space over C. So we can look at the linear maps from CX back to CX. So that's the space of endomorphisms. Of CX, so the C linear maps from CX to CX. And one example of such a linear automorphism is just the differentiation operator. Okay, so let's just see what that does. Okay, so if you have some polynomial inside here, let's call it P, it just sends it to its derivative, which is also a polynomial. And as we know, this uh, sends sums of polynomials to the sums of the derivatives. And if you scalar multiply this by some uh, complex number, you can pull out that complex number so it is linear and it is an element inside here. Okay, So this derivative is inside this endomorphism um, of the CX, and this is a ring. Okay, It's an endomorphism ring. Okay, So we're going to consider now another element that's inside here, Okay, and that's given by some polynomial inside here, any polynomial you like. Okay, So suppose you pick one, and we're going to consider multiplication by Q. Okay, So what that means is that uh, uh, so that is, and uh, we'll use the same letter to denote it just by Q, so there's a bit of abuse of notation here. It's going to send a polynomial P to just Q times P. Okay. So now we have an element uh, that's uh, inside here as well for every polynomial Q inside C of X. Okay. So you can see certainly this is also going to be a C linear, C linear map. Okay, and so you can look at these two elements inside this algebra and multiply them. Okay, so that's what we'll do. We multiply this d dx and this q, and the interesting formula we get out of this is that uh, well we know this ring is non-commutative, and in fact this is an example which shows the non-commutativity of this ring. Okay, because this is not equal to q times d dx, but rather it equals q times d dx plus an extra term, and that extra term is the derivative of q. Okay, so remember this is also a polynomial, so that means that it also corresponds to some element in this endomorphism ring. Okay, so that's very nice, and let's just see why this is true. Okay, so we will look at this element in here, which is some endomorphism of this space of complex polynomials. Okay, so uh, let's see where it sends a polynomial p. Okay, where does it send P? So first you apply this Q map, okay, this Q endomorphism, which is just multiplication by Q. And then you apply this derivative, so you differentiate this. And you see here, now you're taking the derivative of a product of polynomials, so to compute it we use the product rule. Okay, so let's compute that. So we can differentiate uh, the P first, okay, so you get Q times to P dx. And then you can also uh, uh, differentiate uh, the Q and multiply it by P. So that'll be Q prime times P. And if you can see, what have I done to this P? I've done the derivative first and then composed it by multiplying by Q. So that's one thing I've done. That's Q times D dx. Um, and I've also added a term to it, which is just Q prime times that P. So what have I done to this P? Okay, so this left-hand side, okay, what have I done to the P? It's the same as what I've done here, okay? It's the sum of two operations. The first one is you do the derivative and then multiply by Q, so that's Q D DX, that's over here. And I've also just multiplied by the derivative Q, and that's this Q prime here. Okay, so this is the beautiful formula that you have that occurs um, 
when you study this ring of automorph endomorphisms of this space here. Okay? And a very, very special case occurs when you pick for Q the polynomial which is just X. Okay? So I want to write this down in particular. And uh, this is a very, very uh, common formula that you will see. Okay? So if we look at what's called the commutator of these two operators, d, dx, and x, okay, so let's just remind ourselves what the commutator is. Um, it's just, you look at d, dx times x, and you subtract it from the product in the opposite order, x, d, dx. Okay, so here q equals x. So if you put this to the other side, you'll get this commutator of d, dx, and q. So if you put q equals the x, q prime is just equal to 1. So this is equal to 1. The commutator of d dx and x is equal to 1. So just to remind you why is the commutator important here, okay, and an important notion, okay, and why is this called the commutator? Okay, so when the commutator is equal to 0, that means that the, these two operators commute, okay, these two elements of the ring commute. Okay, so in this case, they don't commute, because the commutator is non-zero, in fact, it's equal to one. Okay. So now that we have that, oh, we are ready to define uh, the first Val algebra. So what is the first Val algebra? It's going to be a sub-algebra of the endomorphism algebra of Cx. Okay. So it's going to be an algebra over C. So it will contain C. And it's going to be generated by firstly the x and also this ddx. So it's the smallest C algebra, C subalgebra of this endomorphism algebra, which contains both x and d dx. Okay, so I'll tell you exactly what it will look like in a moment. Okay, uh, but the key point to, to notice is that um, this sub algebra is already non-commutative because we know the commutator between the x and the d dx is not zero; it's equal to one. Okay, so let's have a little think about what this looks like. Okay? And in fact, this little formula is going to pretty much tell us exactly what it looks like. So the first thing is that this is the smallest C algebra inside here, containing both x and d dx. Since it contains x, it contains the polynomial ring um, with complex coefficients in x, as you think of them inside here. So in other words, all these multiplication by all these polynomials. So all these polynomials uh, in x occur. But actually the same is true with the ddx. You have all these polynomials in ddx as well. Okay, so what's a polynomial in ddx? Well, firstly, you have the higher powers of ddx. So if you square this, okay, if you do ddx twice, of course, you just get the second derivative. Okay, and if you do it three times, you get the third derivative and so forth. So you just get these higher dif um, order differential operators. Okay, so since you have all those things and you can form any product and linear combination of these things, okay, the types of things that you can see straight away that you'll get um, have uh, this form, okay? So you can certainly generate any um, element of this form here. So here we have these QIs, they're just uh, polynomials in X, okay? So they're inside this first file algebra, and you can multiply them with uh, powers of the derivative operator, okay? So here we've got QN times DN d to the n dxn plus all the way down to q1 d dx plus q0. And this is certainly an element inside the first Val algebra. And what this proposition is saying is that actually any element inside the first Val algebra can be written essentially uniquely in this form. Okay, so it's rather nice. So one way to think about this is you can kind of think of this as a polynomial in d dx, right? But the coefficients are inside the uh, polynomial rings in X. Okay, that's where the coefficients lie. And since these polynomials don't commute with these derivative operators, we better decide whether we want to put the uh, uh, polynomials on the left. So here the, co the coefficients are going to be on the left or on the right. Okay, so that's the standard that we put them on the left like that. Okay, so let's just see why it's true, okay, that uh, everything inside here can be written in that form. And the key thing is essentially this formula here, right? If you try to multiply um, two elements like this, uh, what might happen, okay? So the key point is that uh, if you try to multiply these together, why is it that you can assume 
that all the polynomials lie to the left of the powers of d dx, okay, to the, the derivative uh, operators, okay, the, uh, these things like that. And the reason is for this reason here, okay, this formula here rather, okay. So if you try to do dx times x, then we know we've got um, d dx x, so the x here is on the right, we can rewrite that as x d dx um, plus 1, so we can push the x to the left and have a polynomial there. And more generally, if you have polynomials to the right hand side of the, the d dx, you can push it over to the left, okay, to get q times d dx, and then add, well there's a smaller degree term here. Okay. And if you use induction on this formula, you can show that anything that you write as a non-commutative polynomial in x and d dx, you can rewrite by pushing all the x's to the left using this formula, okay, all the polynomials in x to the left, and so this d, the powers of d, dx are going to be on the right hand side, and then you have a sum of terms like that. And that shows you how to reduce everything inside here in this form. Okay, so that's very nice. You can think about all the elements inside here. What are they? They correspond to these, uh, uh, what are called differential operators with polynomial coefficients. Okay. And in fact, this is uh, uh, essentially unique. Okay. So this sequence of polynomial coefficients that will define, uh, uh, they are defined uniquely for each element inside A1. And if you want to see why that's true, uh, it's not too difficult, but let me just tell you the key reason why that's true. And that is because uh, you just need to check that if you have a non-trivial uh, differential operator like that, it actually acts non-trivially. Okay, so how do you check that? So suppose, for example, that this Q0 is equal to 0, but this Q1 is non-zero. Okay, and then you want to say that this is a non-trivial differential operator. Of course, hopefully you know that it has to be, but the easiest way to check that that's true is let's just apply that this differential operator in that case to x. Okay, if you apply it to x, so this q0 is going to be 0. When you differentiate x, you'll get 1 here, so you'll uh, get q, this polynomial q1 here. And if you take any higher derivative of x, you'll get uh, 0. So Q1 is non-zero, so the action is non-zero. It's a non-trivial differential operator. Okay, But that's very nice that you can write down all the elements fairly explicitly in this otherwise very large ring and non-wieldy. Okay, so that's great. But what's the relationship to differential equations? Okay, So that's what I want to tell you about next. Okay, So um, uh, let's just do it by way of a little example and you'll be able to see fairly clearly how it generalizes later, okay? And for this little example, let's just pick uh, Q to be some polynomial with complex coefficients here, okay? And uh, uh, as usual, when you try to solve for a differential equation, you're trying to find a function, so you'll need a space of functions where you want to uh, find a solution, okay? So let's suppose uh, our space of functions is just gonna be the space of holomorphic functions on C, okay? Just to keep things simple, okay? So I'll denote that with this color graphic H. And we want to find an F which satisfies a certain differential equation. And I'll just pick one that's going to be one that's fairly useful and one that you would have seen a lot. That's going to be df dx minus qf is equal to zero. Okay, so this is a linear differential equation. Okay, so it's something that we know how to solve fairly easily. Okay, but I just want to show you how you set this up in terms of the language of this first Baal algebra. Okay, so firstly, um, we're talking about an algebra here, and we want to do algebra. Okay, so uh, uh, where does the algebra come in? So the first thing to note is that um, so this H, this space of holomorphic functions, is naturally a module over this a1 okay so why is that true so firstly this space it's a it's a space it's a complex vector space okay and i guess to be a, a module you also need to have a scalar action of x and d dx okay so if you give it a holomorphic function uh, well how does x act well it's just multiplication by x if you have a holomorphic function um, in x, and you multiply by x, that's still a homomorphic function, okay? 
What about d dx? Well, it's a holomorphic function, so you can differentiate it to get a holomorphic function. Okay, and that's the action of d dx. And uh, if you think about it, of course, uh, that will give you a uh, actual module, okay, over this endomorphism, um, uh, this h, this space of holomorphic functions is actually a uh, a module, okay. So you can check that. Well, how does so this is your gen general element of a, a one? How does this act on this function? Well, you just apply this differential operator to it, okay. That's how it acts. And of course, it's going to uh, behave the way you expect. Okay. So by the way, uh, one of the things that you can do uh, is if you want to think about what this is actually isomorphic to, you can define it in terms of generators and relations. Okay. Uh, and that's part of the reason why I wrote this here. This is actually isomorphic to the free algebra in two variables. If you call the variables x and d dx, then um, it's isomorphic to the free algebra quotient out by this single relation here. That the commutator of d dx and x is equal to 1. Okay, so if you want to check that this is actually a module, that's the easiest way to do it. You just check this one relation. Uh, the commutator of d dx and x is equal to 1. So great, we have a module. Okay, we have an algebra and we have a module. And that's the module here. Okay. So, uh, um, so what have I done to this uh, function f here? I guess I've applied a differential operator. And that differential operator, let's call it d, is d dx minus q. And that's something inside a1. So basically, uh, what does it mean to have a solution to this? Okay. So that means that when I apply the differential operator d okay, to this f, so f is inside this h, and I can and uh, D is inside this A1 and this is an uh, A1 module so we can talk about DF and the equation is just that DF is equal to zero okay that's the equation that we have okay so what's another way of writing this I want to use a little bit more module theory so that you can see uh, the connection uh, of, of this algebra to what's happening here okay so uh, yeah, so what can you do about this? So firstly, if you're given any function inside H, okay, this is an A1 module, okay, there's a corresponding uh, linear, uh, A1 linear map from A1 to that H. It sends 1 to uh, whatever element you pick there. So maybe it's F. And one way to reinterpret this equation is to talk about this map here. So how do I want to uh, interpret this? Okay, so one thing that we can do is that if you have an element D inside here, you can look at the left module generated by that. So that's A1D. And that's going to be a, a left ideal inside this A1. So you can look at this quotient module, A1 mod A1D. And so uh, what happens uh, if this equation is satisfied is that firstly, uh, where does D get sent to? Okay, in this uh, homomorphism. So D gets sent to in this homomorphism DF. So that means it gets sent to zero. And similarly, A1D, anything inside A1D gets sent to zero. So that means that this induces, by the universal property of quotients, a homomorphism from the quotient module A1 mod A1D to H. And it sends the coset containing 1 to f. So this is the relationship between the Val algebra and the solution to differential equations. Okay? So uh, essentially, if you want to have a solution to this uh, uh, inside h here, to this differential equation, what you'll find is you look at the corresponding module, a1 module, and there's a homomorphic image of this module inside this h. And depending on what that homomorphism you pick is, okay, if you pick that homomorphism, that will give you the solution. So this is a way to reinterpret it. And also it means that abstractly this module kind of captures a solution to the differential equation. Okay, so let's see how now we can use the algebra of the first file algebra to actually solve differential equations. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we know something about the factorization inside A1. Okay.
Okay, so suppose you're actually given D, which is some differential operator inside A1, and you happen to know that you can factorize it as two of the things of the form I gave you in the previous example. So say D dx minus Q1 times D dx minus Q2. Okay, so um, just so that you can see that this is not so easy to do in general, let's just work out what this is. You have d dx times d dx is d2 dx squared. Okay, and you've also got uh, the cross product as minus q1 d dx. But you've also got a uh, minus d dx uh, times q2. And of course, this is on the right hand side. So if you want to swap it to the other side, you can do a minus q2 d dx. But you have to add in the derivative of q2 as well. So that's uh, minus q2 prime. And then there's also this product term. It's a product rather. So it's q1 times q2. So in this case here, because it's a non-commutative ring, right? So here you have a second order differential operator. Coefficient of d2 dx squared is 1. The coefficient of d dx is minus q1 minus q2. And the constant term here is going to be q1 q2 minus q2 prime. Okay. So this is a second order. So uh, it's not so obvious if you can even factorize it into a product of these linear sort of uh, differential operators, okay, first order differential operators. But suppose you can. Then I claim that for this d here, this differential operator, if you want to solve df equals g, it's actually quite simple. Okay? And the key point is that if the differential operator is of this form, then the li it's linear and we can solve it. And the point here is that factorization in this first Val algebra allows you to solve this as a cascaded system of differential equations. So let's see how that works, okay? So you're applying this differential operator to f. So this is an equation inside this um, some module. So I haven't stated where the functions f and g are, but, but let's suppose that we have some space of functions and that you can differentiate on there and multiply by a complex um, polynomial. So it is a module over A1. And this is an equation in that module, okay? So what happens then? So we try to solve this. So I guess the thing is that we can call this element, okay, you can define this to be, say, f1. So that's a function, okay? And so what you want to do is you want to solve this uh, differential equation, this first order operator times f1 equals g. That's linear, so you can solve for this f1. And once you've solved for that f1, what can you do over here? Okay, so this is another linear equation. So you can solve for this f once you have that f1. So basically, by factorizing this, okay, what it allows you to do is you reduce this to this second order differential equation, okay, to a uh, succession of solving linear ones, okay, and that corresponds precisely to this factorization that you see here. It's pretty neat, isn't it? Okay, so let me just conclude with some remarks about this. Okay, so firstly, of course, this generalizes to more factors. You could have many extra ones like this, and it will still work. And the next thing also is that uh, uh, in general it's quite hard to actually perform this factorization because it's a non-commutative ring okay but let's look at a case where we've actually done and you should know very well and that's in your first ODEs course and often when you look at this in your first um, course in ordinary differential equations you don't get explained in this way but now we can give the proper explanation for what's going on okay so here you're looking at a constant coefficient differential operator. So D has this form here, okay? It's a polynomial in D dx, but you have here constants, okay? C, I, R inside C. So in other words, it's an element of uh, the uh, polynomial in D dx with complex coefficients. So this is a subring, a subalgebra of this first Val algebra. But the thing is that, well, you're only adding one element inside here. It's clearly a transcendental element. So this is, as an algebra, it's isomorphic to just the polynomial ring. Okay, so since it's isomorphic to the polynomial ring, 
So to factorize this types of expressions, you just have to factorize in here. And we know how to do that. And in fact, that's what you've been taught to do in your first um, ordinary differential equations course. You just factorize this just by pretending this uh, ddx is just like any variable. Okay. And now we know that actually we're performing this uh, factorization inside this VAL algebra. Okay. So that allows us to do this factorization. And of course, you can essentially use this method here. This factorization will allow you to solve this differential equation as a cascaded system. I hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics.